cut it off somehow? Nah, I'll do that when I get back. Okay. I have to do a protocol stuff. Okay. Good luck. There. Good evening. Good. Sorry we're a little late. Uh, we didn't have a projector 15 minutes ago. <laughs> um, so we have one now. Our topic this evening is selenium. Anyone worked with it at all? Any ideas? Okay, good. Everybody's working on um, This is Summer Hack, 24th of August, 2017. My name is Edward Cirillo. This is Jacob Lynch. Our background, um, I'm from California. You can see it here, Dorley Dance. <laughs> and uh, three weeks ago, I became Norwegian. I got a letter in the mail that said, I am now Norwegian which is fantastic. Um, I went to the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, and I worked for a couple companies, um, IBM, heard of it, uh, yeah, and then this other Norwegian company called Statoil for a few years, and then this uh, Swedish company called Volvo, and uh, they since sold off their car company, and it's now uh, Chinese. And they since sold off the company I work for, which was Volvo Information Technology, and now it's India. And uh, so currently, I'm working for a company called Time and Date. It's a small Norwegian company. We're bleeding edge internet. We survive on ad clicks. Um, we have three sites: a Norwegian site, a German site, and a. English site, did I get that right? And um, we uh, do time and date calculations, which sounds really niche market, and it sort of is, until last Monday when we had a big eclipse and everybody wanted to know what is happening. We got we usually get millions of hits per day. Um, we ended up going from our usual seven servers up to 53 servers on Monday. We actually brought on servers, and it worked out pretty well. So I'm based in Stavanger. Jacob? I'm based in Bellingham, Washington. Jacob's an engineering student at Bellingham Technical College in Bellingham, Washington. It's uh, about 100 miles north of Seattle. It's a Microsoft country. And uh, <laughs> it's close to the Canadian border, so there is some, uh, there is some sane life. Uh, neither of us voted for Trump. Um, <laughs> so we start out with what is Selenium? Good. What is Selenium? Selenium is an open source framework for testing software. Okay, this is software that tests software. And this has become really important these days because the kind of software that's being developed is no longer developed in-house. It used to be Danske Bank, Nordea, Statoil. Oh wait, Statoil is no longer Statoil. Um, it used to be companies developed in-house. They have their own IT department. Well, now people are outsourcing, right sourcing, um, that's a Capgemini term. Anybody from Capgemini? Good. And uh, I've uh, been through a number of banks that all they all outsource to. I'm oh, sorry, right right shoring is the term that uh, Capgemini uses. And a lot of the stuff they've right shored has uh, been to India for the last few years. And these days, China is the new India. But uh, what's happening is the software that gets developed in an area that doesn't know the business not quite matching the requirements that haven't ever been written down. Um, a lot of times we did a project a few years ago with a, a bank um, that's uh, it's now called Santander here in, in Scandinavia. We did a credit scoring uh, project for them and they wanted the coding to be done in India and this company in India won the project, uh, Capgemini, and uh, they didn't know what bank zero was. Well. Everybody knows what Bank Zero is. Here, we don't have to really document what it is, but the guys in India didn't know it. They'd never heard of it. You know, they Googled it a bit, I'm sure. And uh, when it came back, it just didn't meet our needs at all. It didn't meet it, it just didn't. You know, that, that pink letter you get every every month that you open up and just go in this thing. You know, they didn't know what that was. You know, they didn't know that the pink letter that everyone dreads is something that they have to code around. So. At a very uh, basic level, Selenium runs on Windows, it runs on Linux, it runs on OS X. It 
has several different levels and several different versions. At the basic level, the Selenium IDE, the Interactive Development Environment, allows keystrokes in a browser to be recorded and played back. Then you can take those keystrokes that you've recorded and you can edit them. So let's say you want to do, uh, you want to test a, a drop-down menu. The first time you want to test option A, the second time you want to test option B, the third time you want to test option C, the 26th time you want to test option Z. So you can do that. You could click on record and you could say A, enter, B, enter, C, enter, B, enter. Or you could do it once, copy it over to an HTML file, go into your favorite editor, copy it from A and B, C, and E, and E, and C, and then go down and uh, change your change your parameters, and then run it. And we'll show you an example of how to do that. Um, it also can run in higher level languages such as Java. My particular thing is Java these days. And uh, you can run it You can run it in Java, Ruby, C Sharp, C, C++ seems to be popular here in Denmark. What was it developed here? Something like that? OK. Um, yeah. And uh, you can manipulate the the pages by writing programs. So you, it, they used to call it, in, in past days, they called it screen scraping or something like that. You could actually, you intercept, you intercept a browser page, a screen, you modify it, and then you send it back. Well, that's a heck of a lot better than sitting there with your mouse going click, click, enter, click. And especially when you need to repeat that test 500 times, or you run it, want to run it 10,000 times to create a volume test, to see how your server works. It, it's uh, your server on the back end works. It works really well. Um, there's also several different variations. One of the ones that I'm into at the moment is the company I work for, we do also do Android apps and, and uh, iOS apps. We have an Android version of this that we test our Android apps with. You know, the Android app, the Android app guys give me a new version every other hour. You know, and I gotta go back and run the same tests, you know. Like, Yes, yes. It's so much easier to write a program than run the program. Okay, and where did it come from? The name, Selenium. It's a funny name, isn't it? Well, back in 1999, um, there was this problem we had. I was working at Staff Oil, and we had this problem called Y2K. Anybody remember that? Okay. Um, there, was a, uh, there was a testing software called Mercury came from a company in uh, California called Mercury Interactive, and it worked out really well at Stato, we bought it, and we used that for testing the Y2K project. Mostly with Y2K, it was testing old programs. It wasn't developing a lot of new programs. The Stato had been smart enough. Um, when Stato spun off from ESSO, going back 10 years before that, they pretty much had four, four digit years. They just needed to test the stuff to make sure it, it went over. There was some new development that needed to get done. But the Y2K project for Statoil was a testing project rather than a new development project. Um, so they bought Mercury, and it cost some amount of money. At that point, we didn't know what it cost. But then, after, after the year 2000, we wanted to keep using it for testing our, our new programs, and we thought that was really good. But then, it got bought by Hewlett Packard. The company got bought. Mercury Interactive in California got bought by Hewlett Packard in, in, in California. And this little company with like 26 people, they paid four and a half billion, billion with a V, billion dollars for this company. I mean, I, you know, their software was worth a lot, but they had no assets. They had some desks, they had some laptops, they, they leased their, their um, they leased their, their offices. They didn't have four and a half billion dollars worth of assets. Generally, like Gardner Group, they said that Hewlett Packard overpaid for the company. It was a good product. They paid an excessive price for it. And it's now been rebranded as HP Quality Center. It's, uh, it's a good product. They've expanded it. But they've also raised the price incredibly. So what happened was, um, there was a small team in Chicago who said, well, we're not going to pay for this. And they were also open source guys. And they said, well, we're going to need something. They wrote it themselves. And they wrote it. There were small pieces and parts. And it slowly has come together. But it's, it's about 16 years old now. 
And the name, they picked the name selenium because if you ingest quicksilver, if you get mercury poisoning, the antidote for mercury poisoning is selenium. It's on the periodic table. So they said, okay, selenium is the antidote for mercury. Geek humor. Okay? So, if you want to follow along, we're going to have the laptops out. Okay, nobody has the laptops out. <laughs> okay. We're going, you could download it from here. Um, at the moment, it's having a little, it's having a little, uh, little compatibility issue with Firefox, because they've got a new version out, Firefox hasn't caught up with it, or vice versa. So what we're doing, we're, we're running an old version of Firefox. But you won't see the difference. Okay, so let's um, you do bolt test. Good. And go over to the as close as to the It's doing a full screen thing and we can't see it. And it's not closing. Selenium in a Firefox window. There's two ways to run it. You can run it as a sidebar or you can run it as a separate pop-up. If you run it as a separate pop-up, you keep having to do Alt-Tab to get over to it. So I prefer running it in a... Uh, you can't see part of this. Um, is it... button here, which is the big red button, and let's go to something uh, like 
the Weather Channel, yeah, weather.com. And let's go to the search bar here. Pick a name of the city that we can spell. Um, well, what? Copenhagen. Copenhagen. Yeah, we can spell that. <laughs> um, Oslo. Try Oslo. O S L O. Okay. O S L O. Yeah. Okay, that works. Just pick one of them. This is Lucen in Spain. Sounds a lot warmer. Notice what it's doing is as he keys as he as he uh, keys strokes, it's recording into this uh, window here. Now, the asterisk shows you he has test cases that are unsaved. Welcome. Um, so now go to test case Charlie two. Go back to the same search bar, and we'll pick uh, we'll pick uh, Alborg, A A L B O R G, in honor of Thomas and Peter. Okay, and we found it. Good. And it's recording the keystrokes that he's done there. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to save those keystrokes. We want to save these test cases, and we're going to come back to them. So. Go ahead and save the test suite. And when he saves the test suite, the asterisk went away from both of these. That shows that we both have uh, we have both test cases saved. Okay, so now let's look at what we saved. Go into Windows Explorer and <coughs> what happened to Charlie Suite? Say test suite and Charlie Sweet, you can put that. Save. Okay, so let's go into Charlie Sweet and open it in WordPad. You can use any editor. I use Eclipse because I'm old. I don't know what's the current what's the current uh, AI? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's one. We use WordPad just to be lowest common denominator here. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Okay, so it's got lots of HTML stuff at the top, the body, and then this is the key here. It actually it creates this is the suite. So Charlie Suite executes Charlie1.html and Charlie2.html. So by grouping the test cases together into a suite, you can execute them in any order. Now let's look at what the test cases look like. And go into, yeah, we lost the documents. Okay. This, it grow, groups everything together. Let's go down a bit. Yeah, it groups everything together. So first what it did, it opened a page called Slash. So it opened the, whatever page you're looking at. Yeah. Then it went down, go down further, and we input a value. I guess we hit enter here. We clicked on a value that was linked to that, and then it ends. And we get a click, and we're done. So basically what we did in that test case is we looked at something, and then we executed it. Okay, and we looked at the same one. Don't say um, And it looks that way if you wanted to see it in HTML. Why is it uh, HTML and not XML? Or JSON or whatever. When you get into Java, you can do that. Yeah. But in the simplest, this is the there's there's multiple levels. Of, uh, okay. uh, this is the simplest form. So I figured we start with we start yeah, with yeah, HTML. Yeah. We'll move to Java when I get onto this. Okay. And believe me, you can do anything with it. You can make you can make pages dance. 
The hard part, and I'll get into that, is name, some of the people don't name fields. If yeah. they don't have an ID, if they don't have a class, if they don't have something, if I have to use, um, somehow I have to find a way to name a field because if, to populate the field or to click on it, I gotta find the name. And half my problems on screens is trying to figure out what the hell the name is. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to, uh, let's go back to Selenium on Firefox, good. Okay, now what we can do, if we want to, if we can play this whole suite. We have Charlie's suite here. So you have an option of uh, setting the speed. Usually when I'm looking at a, a, a test case for the first time, I'll slow it down. If I'm doing a thousand test cases, I keep it going, I'm trying to hit the server as, ha as fast as I possibly can. Some people call this denial of service. Um, but if I'm beating on a test server, I mean, like I said, we, we went from seven servers on Monday to 53 servers. You know, that, that's a lot of people hitting our, hitting our servers. So I need to be able to test test them. Okay, try hitting play. And we'll see what it's doing over here is... It... Yeah, click open this too. I guess it. So it's keying in what Jacob keyed in a little bit before. There. All work. 64 degrees. And not millimeters. I mean, what do you call that stuff? Celsius. That hundred stuff? Yeah, that hundred stuff. You can't understand? <laughs> and freezing is 32. It was invented by a Danish guy, wasn't it? No idea. Romer? Come on, come on! You've got you've got all this stuff in the in the Rosenberg Castle. Got all this stuff in this guy. He invented it. You guys at least have to use Fahrenheit. Okay. We're in denial. We're in denial. Good, good, good. All right. Well, let's do another test now. Oh, one more thing. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Let's go back into. Um, let's go into file, and you can also export this stuff. Export the test suite in several different formats. C sharp format, several different Java formats. If anybody worked with JUnit, yeah. it doesn't do too much, but it, it does organize your tests really nicely. Ruby, I've not done anything with. That's for younger kids. Yeah. You, Ruby? Yeah, I know. How do you assert? How do I what? Assert. You, if you're just playing out commands here, how do you assert the, the output? Uh, it's live. I mean, it's it's. Uh, if I click enter, it, it's an enter. Okay. If, if I key a name in the name field and click enter, it's there. And of course, the company I work for, we have test servers, so I, I tested on the test server first. But um, yeah, but how, how do you assert that that it is actually showing all about on the screen? So, um, so you've recorded. That you typed in. Ah, yes. There's a log. Okay. Yes. Okay. I didn't get to that. Yeah. There. There is a. There is an extensive. It's. It's an extensive log. Sometimes you got to go through it with a fine tooth comb and, and and look for what you're looking for. But you can log every step before what you key and after. Okay. Yeah. That's a little bit more complicated. <laughs> this. We're starting on the simple work. Okay. Um, we can export it into different versions, and we can also use the HTML editor. We could edit something and bring it back, and that's what we're going to do next. So our first test here, test case one, um, to delete everything we got there. Make sure you can close it and open it if you want, or whichever is faster. Okay, so we're starting from clean now. This is a clean test. So the first thing we want to do is go to a generic site. Um, when I was working at Volvo, I used to use vg.no as a generic site, and my manager got statistics every month over, you know, they're trying to record, you know, who's, who's playing on the internet, how many, how many times you use Facebook, and VG ended up getting 
10,000 hits every month, and it was all me. And my Swedish manager, of course, came in and said, what is this VG? You're reading it all the time? I said, no, no, what I do is I go to a neutral, it's like boxers going to a neutral corner. I would start at something like VG.no to make sure my tests always start from the same place to, to make them, um, uh, to make them uh, just a valid starting point. So start at something like www.cnn.com. Good. Okay, so this is CNN, or as Darth Vader said, this is CNN. And, uh, come on, I laugh at that. <laughs> I worked hard at that. Um, I can't stay a programmer. Comedy isn't going to go. All right, so start recording in Selenium. Hit the red button. Okay, we're recording? Okay, now key in something like nasa.gov in the URL field. And notice Okay, didn't record anything yet. Um, go to the search field and type Apollo. There. Okay, now see how these pop in? It, it actually records the URL in a different spot, not in the uh, uh, not in that window. Okay, and then page down, click on Apollo missions, page down a bit. Yeah, there, the Apollo missions. Okay, and then let's page down a little bit more and click on Apollo 17. Good. Okay, and stop recording and do a file save. And let's call it Delta. Oh, I didn't do it quite right. That's the whole web page. Um, escape out. And 2017. And yeah, let's escape, escape out of where you're at. Yeah. And oh shit! I almost lost that one. <laughs> click on Untitled and do a file save. <coughs> Okay, yeah, that's it. Okay, call it uh, Apollo 17. Good. Okay, save on that one. Okay. Then go into Windows Explorer and go into that subdirectory. So it's in the documents and open it in WordPad. And page down, and we'll see what we did is we searched for Apollo. We searched for this exact text, Apollo 17. Okay, close this. Don't save. And take the Apollo 17. Do a Control C, Control V. Copy it. Or yeah. exactly. Now take this one. Rename it with a right click and give new name. This is fun. These kids learned no reason on this one. <laughs> um, change it to Apollo 11. Perfect. Good. Okay. Now go back into Selenium. Yeah. Go back to the software update. What is this thing doing? Close that, can you? Well, strongly recommended. Yeah, if it worked right, we'd strongly update too. Um, we had a little panic last night when suddenly the new version of Firefox didn't work with the old version of Selenium. Okay, so now do a file open. Great. And here's the Apollo 11 file. Okay. Now go down and you'll see. You page down a little bit in here. Go down where we're on this. You can't see where I'm pointing. Sorry. <laughs> I'm pointing at the screen. On this side, you can page down a little bit on that. Yeah. And you can make it a little bigger if you wanted. So I can see it. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So what we've done here, we have a file called Apollo 11, but it has text called Apollo 17. So now, go back into um, Explorer. 
and go open that file with WordPad. That's it. Okay, go to the bottom and change these from Apollo 17 to Apollo 11. And I notice there's another one up to the top. Go up to the top again, if you would, please. Notice somewhere you're going. Is that heading somewhere? Yeah, there, this title. Change that title to Apollo 11, too. Please. That's also one of the ones. Is there one? Do we miss one? Okay. Fine. The, yeah, up again. Right. Oh, there it is, yeah. Right, so we're using you know plain old WordPad to do this. You can use any anything you want. Um, so go ahead and save this. Okay, and then exit out, and then go back into there, and then do the file open again. And don't save. And file eleven, yeah, file eleven. Okay, now page down to the bottom. You can use the the down arrow if you want. Yeah, see, now we've changed it. It's file name Apollo 11. We've edited it. And you can see how much easier this would be to edit it. This is a little hard to edit it. The, the boxes are a little small. But you can use your favorite editor to do that. Now, run it. It's the name up there. It's searching for Apollo. Now it's going to... Go down. Well, the, the page actually has changed a little bit since the first time we saved this. But you see what we did is we, we saved the file, we edited it, and then we ran it. And we got the new values in there. Okay? This is the simplest version of it. This allows you to record keystrokes, play back the keystrokes. You can save the files, you can edit the files, you can run the files. And you can run them a thousand times if you want. You can actually uh, cripple a server by doing that. We did it. Um, it says one failure. Yeah, it's <coughs> something isn't working right. All right. <laughs> it's. Uh, can we see? I don't know what it's trying. It's, <coughs> what it's trying to do is here. Um, it's trying to find. It. Can you make this a little bit bigger, or make this one uh, next value? Can make that one a little bit bigger. That one over a little bit. It's some uh, some value it's not finding right yeah, yeah. It, for the click and wait. When we tried this the first time, it worked. When we tried it the second time, it didn't quite work. So you notice you notice well, um, but it does it does generally work when you get it. To, the, like I said, the hardest part about these pages is figuring out what things are named. Um, the other thing that happens with this is once you once you've got it to work on a page, if somebody changes that page, it's not your script isn't going to work again. How does it work when you have a, a button fold type of? It works page. okay in this first version. Yeah. And I'll show you what happens in Java. What you have to do with Java is you have to throw in a page down. Ah, okay. So if you so if you know that a, the yeah. value that you want to click is below the you know below the fold or you know, yeah, yeah. down here, you got to know enough enough to put a page down in. Or sometimes what I'll do is I'll just uh, control minus, control minus, control minus, and make the page really small yeah. um, to put that in. You want to try another page just to see what it looks like? Pick something. Face Monday. Try going to. That's it. FaceMonday.com. Face Monday? Yep. All right. Yep. Okay. okay. What's this? Face Monday, seventeenth of March. Yeah, that's a St. Patrick's Day. No, actually, we were in the uh, we were uh, recording. Ah, okay, so we'll try this. Um, delete this test case. Just clean, get, clean out all the junk. Yeah. Okay, and. Um, Start recording, and maybe we'll click down, page down a bit, and click on click on this pink thing. 
Where'd it go? Let's a little bit more. Pick Size Studio. We got to click on that. And Facebook, why don't you uh, go into Pick Size Studio and, and change it to uh, Summer Hack. See if we can do something. Okay, you guys have my Facebook page now. Uh oh. <laughs> not... Okay. Oh, this is a good one. Click on this one. The Summer Hack picture. We know who this is? No, but that's okay. Okay, stop recording and save the file. The file save. Nope. Go up. Uh, your application for some reason. <laughs> but we did call it yeah, page yeah, yeah. and play it, so the, that's that's pretty good. Alright, we'll throw the last part here. And I have to I set this up. I'm sorry, pardon me. Um, this is called Selenium 2 Server Test Project for Chrome. Let me switch to this. Yeah. I, this thing never leaves the docking station. It's, uh, basic ones out there. One comes from Microsoft uh, for the Edge browser, and it's got bugs in it. I've written cases to Microsoft. They just ignore me. Chrome works really well. Firefox works really well. I haven't tried Opera. I haven't tried uh, any of the other minor ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and run a test case where we're going to go to my colleague's website. We're going to click on the search button. We're going to look for Blue Moon. We're going to click on the search button. 
it's going to write, I've got this set up to do J tests. Wait, use that one? It's, it's much, less, there's several of them out on the market. They all just sort of organize your tests for you and produce some sort of little, little output. One of the things I like to do is when I run tests, I create a page picture first, then I do the test, then I create a page picture afterwards. That way, when I look back at the pictures, it's, it's like a, you know, a, a sequence of what I'm doing, especially if I'm testing a function like you know, add a customer. I want to see what went wrong at one point. Okay, then we're going to exit out. device. Um, both work 
both work differently. You wouldn't want anything to work the same. The emulated devices, if you have a, a you know, an LG Model 6, and you create an emulated device for an LG Model 6, you would think that the emulated device would match the phone. You're wrong. I mean, they say that Java runs, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Thomas. They say Java runs on, you know, 6 billion devices. It doesn't run well on 6 billion devices. <laughs> right? I mean, if you're driving an Audi and you've got embedded <coughs> Java in your brake system, right? Is it going to work? Is your car going to stop? Eventually. Eventually, <laughs> yeah, eventually it'll stop. All right. Questions, comments? Can I elaborate on anything? Is this something you can use? Uh, if you, you yeah. If you set up a, a test case, can mm -hmm. we then uh, uh, centrally control and say, okay, put this up to maybe 10 clients? And then yep. have all ten clients run at the same yes. time. Uh oh, oh. Uh, I can get all I can get all ten clients to run it. Yeah. Getting it to run at the same time is your problem. Okay. I can I can put them out there into a job scheduler or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. getting them to all run at the same time, okay, that's tricky. But it's it's basically an HTML program, an HTML script, or I can create a Java program out of this. This is a Java program. Yeah, yeah. I can send it to you and you can run it in your browser, on your machine, and your home network. They're clear. Can I make anything clearer? Yeah, can you use it in programs other than uh, <coughs> browsers? Um, uh, Ida was trying to get me to say the German word for yes and no together, and I couldn't quite get it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yes and no. Uh, you don't use this version of Selenium, uh, use a different version of Selenium. Okay. So there is a version that, that it, it can do COBOL batch programs. Topic near to my heart. Thomas? Okay. Uh, so, so if you have a thousand tests, uh -huh. and you run a thousand tests, how, how do you determine if they pass or fail? Okay. What I do... Um, I like to use, this sounds really primitive, but I like to use Excel. I put my test cases in an Excel spreadsheet. Let's say if I have 10 fields, <coughs> a customer ad. I need to add a name, I need to add an address, I need to have a house number, I need to have a floor number, I need to have a left to right side number, I need to have a city, and I need to have a postal code. That's about 10 fields, right? So what I do is I create a spreadsheet that has the A, B, C, D, E corresponding with those, and then, I, um, I, I have a little Java program that reads the spreadsheet and it opens up a new session. Uh, Eclipse sort of dies about 50 sessions. So I can run about 50 tests at a time. And it runs it through and at the end, I, I do a screen scrape. I look at what's on the screen and it, it'll either say at the bottom of the page, it'll either say customer added successfully or customer not added successfully. It'll say, you know, postal code invalid or invalid Hoyer Venster or something like that, it'll say something on the screen. So something on that screen will trigger me. So what I'll do is I'll take my test number off my uh, spreadsheet and I'll do a little uh, do a little window here in the uh, console and then later I can go through it and it'll say, you know, successful, 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 bad, bad postal code, successful, 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 bad address. You know, so I use the console. It's not the prettiest way to do it, but it works. If I was really fancy, I'd write it back to the, uh, write, write it back to my original spreadsheet. So you have to rely on what your data tells you. You have to rely on what your web page tells you to determine whether your test is successful or not. That's good. You feel you can use this? It's open source. It's free. If you want to change it, you can do it. Beware. <laughs> Beware. Yes? You mentioned just the most basic version. Yeah. What is like the more advanced? Shut this down.
Yeah, there, if you go to the Selenium pages, there's several different versions that you can use. Um, Selenium Web Driver is the one we did with Java. Selenium IDE is the other one. And then down below here, there are a bunch of different ones uh, that you can read about. They're created by third parties. So there are a lot of people don't like the original version. They create their own. So there's, there's hundreds of different versions of Selenium. Go, go through, look at what you like, pick it out, use it. How likes it on? Um, pretty much. There's a, there's a big Selenium uh, conference going on. Uh, in, here, you can buy tickets. In Berlin. Berlin, yes, yep. on sale now. Why supplies last? Get your ticket now. <laughs> you know, quick, they're selling quickly. You know? We get better food here than anywhere in Berlin. We've been to CCC in the... Uh, we determined that, uh, what was that, uh, that, that place that, uh, uh, what is that store, Aldi, Al Aldi store we went to? It, uh, we determined that uh, water was actually more expensive than beer in Berlin. Yeah, so we just sucked by beer. <coughs> okay. Yes? Have you tried any of the commercial services uh, based on Selenium, which, for example, the Ghost Inspector? I just, and one of the guys at work, uh, mentioned this ghost uh, ghost driver and ghost uh, ghost browser, and I, it's on my list of things to do. I haven't gotten to it yet. We just uh, searched the whole field and decided on ghost inspector. Uh, it costs money, but it has a way better interface. Than we have no money. This the company that I work for, Time and Day, we are we're a bleeding edge internet company. I mean, we're. You know, we, we look at our sales volume every day and we're thinking, oh my God, click some more. Our German site has been losing tons of money. Our German site just exceeded our Norwegian site. But you know, we, need, we need lots of clicks. Um, yeah, we have no money for doing things like that. Someday. Um, I know one that I've used uh, in the past. I did a proof of concept. Um, there's a company here in Denmark called Solsi. It's uh, software where test automation. It's uh, they're all, they're in um, Hillerud, north of Copenhagen, and um, they've got a they've got a test package that is really good. And I did a proof of concept for it um, on this machine. Oops. Go anywhere again. Let's see if we try this one more time. I did a proof of concept on a. Can I highlight this, please? Well, it's called, <coughs> it's called Original Software. It's called the Test Bench from Original Software. And I did a proof of concept at Volvo on the Volvo uh, power systems. And it works really, really, really well. But being a programmer, I tell people I have no idea anything about money. I know it costs something, you know, and they're looking at companies the size of Volvo and banks uh, to buy their product, so it's not free. Um, but I know it's a very good product. Good. Great. Well, thank you guys all for coming. I greatly appreciate it. If you need any help, you can... You know, I can I can set the test for you or give you a demo version. Testing is for chickens, right? <laughs> it's always false to the end of the project. You know, it's just, so. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fifty-eight minutes. Hey, yeah. that's that's as close as we're gonna get. Where's Jesper? Oh wait, he's late. <laughs> <laughs> If you need anything, I can set up yep. examples. I mean, I have literally thousands of examples of things I've done with this. I would imagine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about uh, negative testing and stuff like that? Anything. Anything. Yeah. yeah. You can, it depends what you, what you get back. How do we... Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, um, Jacob. Yeah. I think the lake was yeah. Ah, yes. It was, it was beautiful. Did the already. We did. Uh, uh, we did. I, I, I bought mine. Baby's <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. At least it's a possibility. <laughs> and I'm always, I always wake up in the morning and I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm go. and then I jump in and I'm just like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so you go to the lake every morning or? Yes. We did this morning.